Okay, so I argued in the last lecture segment that if you have a vector field f equals pq in two dimensions, then the quantity dq dx minus dp dy that appears in Green's theorem is some kind of measure of local rotation of the vector field. I now want to define some kind of measure of local rotation of a three-dimensional vector field. So suppose f equals pqr is a vector field in three dimensions. So on some domain in R3. Then we define a new vector field, which is called the curl of f. So curl f. So I'm going to write the formula, which is going to look crazy, and then I'll show you a shortcut for remembering it. So it's dr dy minus dq dz, comma, dp dz minus dr dx, comma, dq dx minus dp dy. Okay, so that's a crazy looking expression. So I can't remember it like that. But anyway, that's what it is very explicitly. And the, the way to remember it So let's think of this symbol, this upside down triangle, del, as a vector with comp components d by dx, d by dy, and d by dz. And then um, our vector field f is pqr, and then the curl of f is del cross product f. So people often write curl like this, is del cross f. So remember that's, um, you know, I'll put this in quotes because you're not allowed to use determinants for, you know, random stuff in them. But anyway, it's the determinant of the matrix i, j, k, d by dx, d by dy, d by dc, um, p, q, r. Okay, so then the first component is d by dy times r minus d by dz times q, which is what we've got up here. The second component is d by dz times p minus d by dx times r, which is what we've got there. And the third component is d by dx times q minus d by dy times p, which is what we have up there. Okay, so that's the, that's the definition of curl. Now, what is the, what is the meaning of this? So the interpretation is that curl F also measures local rotation of F. But see, now it's a vector, not a number. So why is that? So in two dimensions, the local rotation was just a vector. It's just a number. Here it's a vector. So the vector points in the direction of the axis of rotation. So the direction of f, of curl f, sorry. You could think of this as a local axis of rotation. And the magnitude of the curl f is sort of how, uh, the amount of local rotation. Now that's sort of vague and fuzzy, so this is not this is not any kind of precise statement. It's just some kind of intuition for what curl means. The formula that I wrote on the previous page is the actual definition of curl. 
So let's just do an example to see why maybe this interpretation is reasonable. So for example, so suppose f is the vector field minus y comma x comma zero. So in the xy plane, this, um, let's try it over here. So on the positive x-axis, it's going up in the xy plane. The negative x-axis, it's going down. On the positive y-axis, it's going to the left. On the negative y-axis, it's going to the right. Okay, so it sort of looks like it's rotating in the xy plane. And then it has no z component. So if we imagine the z-axis is coming straight out of the page, then this vector field is going horizontally. Okay. So there's that vector field, and what's the curl? So the curl of f, so it's del cross f. So um, it's uh, d by dx comma d by dy comma d by dz cross minus y x zero. So that's the cross product symbol, and that is the variable x. Let's not confuse them. Okay, so the first component, um, I have d by dy times 0, which is 0, minus d by dz times x, which is also 0. For the second component, um, I have d by dz times minus y, which is 0, minus d by dx times 0, which is 0. And for the third component, I have d by dx times x, which is 1, minus d by dy times minus y, which adds another one, so I get 2. Okay, so this has magnitude 2 and points in the z direction. Okay, which um, corresponds to the fact that this vector field looks like it's, it's rotating around the z-axis. Now you can have a more complicated vector field which isn't so simple as this, but it's still, the curl in general still gives you some kind of measure of local rotation of the vector field.